cattle producers are well aware that what they feed their animals can have a big impact on health and productivity of their herd, which has a direct result on their bottom line. Through various partnerships, industry and researchers are getting together to improve forages, from developing new varieties to determining new ways to plant them. One of the partners in forage improvements is PARC, the semi-arid Prairie Agriculture Research Center located in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. As one of several of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada's research centers dealing with forages across the country, SPARC is a leader in the development of new forage lines. Dr. Mike Schellenberg is leading this work. Industry is interested in reducing cost of production as well as feed efficiency. And we were, this will be achieved by using um, plant breeding programs. We'll also be using uh, selection of appropriate species mixtures in pastures so they can improve that productivity as well as, as, as we all know, having animals in the field is the best way to take and reduce some of your, your costs. We'll also be looking at grazing and, uh, grazing and forage techniques to take and, and improve this. And the target is, both by industry and within the research community, is 33% improvement in productivity. An area of particular interest is native species. Since these species have adapted to the local environment over time, integrating these species into modern grazing and forage production systems could provide more stable forage production and pasture management. One of these native species Dr. Schellenberg has developed is prairie clovers, native legumes of the Canadian prairies. In Canada we have uh, two types of uh, pr uh, prairie clovers. One of them is purple prairie clover, the other is white prairie clover. Um, they are the most common. There is also a hairy prairie clover, which is a species at risk. The ones we are interested in from a forage perspective are the, are the white and the purple. The prairie clovers do contain uh, condensed tannins, which uh, can prevent bloat as well as decrease the uh, occurrence of E. coli. There are also uh, potential there to take an improved uh, protein digestion within uh, ruminants, specifically uh, cattle. Prairie clovers grow well in dry conditions and cattle will seek out the still green prairie clover plants in late summer. Dr. Schellenberg is developing new varieties of white and purple prairie clovers with improved characteristics. White prairie clover is less common than the purple variety, but contains more tannins, and its bigger leaves might provide greater forage value. The SPART team is continuing its research into this potential forage crop. Another native species of interest to the SPART team is winter fat. A member of the goosefoot family, winter fat is also known as white sage or lamb's tail. Winter fat is an exciting plant because it is a plant that actually is very uh, cold hardy. It has a very large range from uh, Mexico all the way up into the Yukon just to emphasize the cold hardiness. It is also a plant that retains its crude protein values at fairly high levels, which again is a, uh, a component of feed that is typically for uh, range plants in short supply. The, uh, the plant itself is actually preferred by uh, animals as an ice cream plant. It is also uh, shown to take an actually improve or aid digestion of other materials. Other native species the SPARC team are working on include nodding broom, blue bunch wheatgrass, western wheatgrass, side oak scrama, and little blue stem, all of which were developed through the AAFC's breeding program. Several species that have never been examined before, including ascending milk vetch, slender milk vetch, and Canadian milk vetch, will also be included in their studies. In addition to the native species, Dr. Schellenberg, in collaboration with Dr. Kuhlman of the University of Saskatchewan, will also work with introduced species such as hybrid broom and alfalfa to select for improved drought and production characteristics. But with so many forage plants to choose from, what is the best mix? Existing research proves that biodiversity improves the system's ability to cope with stress. Ongoing research at SPARC is exploring how perennial forage mixtures can best meet forage and ecosystem demands. In addition, evidence from other regions show that mixtures of annual forage plants could improve yield, the amount of organic matter in the soil, moisture retention, and weed and insect control, a potentially great benefit to farmers. 
In spring 2013, Dr. Schellenberg's team began investigating whether these benefits would also be seen in the semi-arid bronze soil zone of southwest Saskatchewan and eastern Alberta. U of S postdoctoral fellow Dr. Jillian Baynard is working with the SPARC team on this project. There is evidence to suggest that incorporating multiple plant species into the same crop uh, can provide a lot of benefits it, to the agrosystem, including increased resilience to stress and better sustainability. A system like this could be used in uh, annual cropping rotation, uh, or you could also use it to reclaim land that perhaps is in need of some uh, boosting before using it for a different purpose. In the system we're looking at here, we're actually using it uh, as a forage example, so where you would actually have animals come and graze the crop, or perhaps you would harvest the material uh, as green feed for the animals. We've split our plants into four different functional groups. A functional group represents uh, contributions to and uses of a system that vary. In this system we have warm season grasses which mature later in the season and are things like corn. We have cool season grasses which mature earlier in the season includes traditional forages like barley or oats. We have legumes which fix nitrogen and that would include things like peas. And our fourth functional group are the root crops which includes things like radishes and turnip which are really good at actually breaking up soil compaction and creating uh, better avenues for soil and water penetration. The study includes 34 combinations and controls with up to 12 species co-planted on one plot. Species selected are already grown in the area and are therefore known to be adapted to the region. Dr. Schellenberg's team is also looking at the nutritional package of these combination of annual forages. These are just some of the projects being done at SPARC, as well as many more throughout other AAFC research centers across the country.